So what's quercetin? It's a flavanol, a plant substance or subclass. If you've heard this term flavonoids, that's quercetin. It's a plant polyphenol known for its antioxidant properties discovered and isolated in the 1930s by the name vitamin P. Vitamin P. So technically it's not a vitamin because it's not an essential requirement for human survival. But again, it was originally given that term vitamin P. It was used to describe the flavonoid compounds thought to influence capillary permeability. Later biochemical analysis identified quercetin as one of the key constituents responsible for these effects. Now the name quercetin is derived from quercus, the Latin name for oak trees, which were among the first known sources of this compound. Let's take a look at some of its key functions and roles and benefits. So number one, it has tremendous antioxidant capacity. It scavenges free radicals, helps to chelate metal ions. So we sometimes use it or see it in natural chelating products. It also helps to prevent lipid peroxidation, which is damage from, uh, that occurs as a result of damaged cell membranes, as well as oxidative DNA damage. So antioxidant functions. It acts as an anti-inflammatory. It blocks several key enzymes like, like lipooxygenase and COX or cyclooxygenase. As a matter of fact, those of you who maybe have heard the term COX inhibitor, which is basically what NSAIDs do, ibuprofen, aspirin, these all block this enzyme right here. Well, quercetin naturally blocks that enzyme without the potential side effects. It also downregulates pro-inflammatory chemicals like TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6. It has immune modulation functions. It stabilizes mast cells, and we'll talk more in depth about this. Those of you that maybe have histamine problems or hyperallergy problems or have been diagnosed with mast cell activation, you're going to want to really pay attention when we talk about it, the immune modulatory effects of, of quercetin. It has antiviral and, uh, and antibacterial activities, so it actually is an antimicrobial. It has cardiovascular protection. Um, there are a number of research studies showing its effect on blood pressure and triglycerides and other key, uh, key regulators that protect us from cardiovascular disease. We know it has tremendous cancer or anti-cancer uh, effects, and we know it protects neurons and has neuroprotective impact. If we look at some of the research studies that have done a really good job of kind of breaking down the functionality of quercetin, you can see here on the upper left-hand side, it says neurodegenerative disease. You've got protects brain cells, has anti-inflammatory properties that protect brain cells, and it also has impacts on Mayo and COMT, which are genetic uh, components that, that um, play a role in neurotransmitter production in the brain. We know it affects diabetes through n numerous mechanisms. We know it has anti-inflammatory effects, predominantly inhibiting mast cell secretion. We know there are effects that it has on prostatitis and prostate, potential for prostate cancer. And then we also see over here gout, um, Gout is a deposition of a, of a compound called uric acid, which are crystals that kind of form inside the joint. And you see this enzyme right here, xanthine oxidase. Well, quercetin has the ability to block that enzyme and reduce the potential for gout. We know it has antibacterial properties. We know it helps the bone because of its role in inhibiting or stopping osteoclasts, which are the cells that break your bone down, but we also know it promotes the growth of new bone. For peptic ulcers, we know that quercetin can help promote mucus secretion. Remember, mucus is the stuff that lines the inside of the stomach, protecting those stomach cells. So offers that protection. We know it has antiviral properties as well. For eye, we know it helps with uh, cataract and macular disorders because of its role as an antioxidant. And we also know its impact on the heart. Now, this study or this review of the mechanisms of potential medicinal benefits of using quercetin 
summarized a tremendous amount of research. A lot of the research, we have multiple types of research on quercetin, some of that research being um, in, in cell lines, some of that research being in animals, particularly mice or rats. And also, we've got a lot of human trials uh, and studies on quercetin as well. You can see in this summary, the therapeutic potential and clinical effectiveness of quercetin as a supplement. Now, we don't just have to take the supplement. You can, as you can see here, these items in this top blue box are foods that are high in quercetin. If you want to incorporate this into your diet, it's a great way to do that. But you can see multiple mechanisms of action here. On both sides, quercetin helps with these mechanisms so that you can get to the benefit, right? And the things in green here, the decreased blood sugar, reduced starch hydrolysis, reduced cholesterol, improved renal function, reduced oxidative stress, and even helps to prevent pancreatic cells, beta cells in the pancreas. Those are the cells that make insulin, and so it can help give those cells protection. And we know it reduces inflammation and being the precursor to every known chronic degenerative disease. We like things that can help us with inflammation. Now, there's also a lot of different anti-cancer targets that have been isolated in studies. Um, so again, this is cancer-fighting mechanisms studied in cells. These are more studies based on, on cells as opposed to actual human trials. Unfortunately, there's not a tremendous amount of human research in clinical trials with quercetin, although I'll show you what, what we do have. But these are just some of the mechanisms of how quercetin helps to fight cancer. Many of these are anti-inflammatory mechanisms. Many of these are protective antioxidant mechanisms. If we kind of look at it at its core, tumor, some of these mechanisms help to in, uh, stop tumor cell proliferation, and some of these help with uh, gene transcription, so reducing the potential for metastasis and cell invasion. Now, if we look at this last diagram here, this is probably one of the better reviews, uh, scoping reviews on all the potentials that quercetin has. As you can see here, a lot of this being redundant, but antioxidant, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, anti-Alzheimer, anti-asthmatic, anti-allergic, anti-hypertensive, that's blood pressure, and that's protection from seasonal allergies, anti-diabetic, anti-obesity, antiviral, and anti-cancer. So a lot of potential there for this one very critical plant phenolic compound. Let's look at some of the human data. So these are studies done in humans showing um, the benefits of the use of quercetin. And again, these are, these are studies predominantly of taking supplemental quercetin, so using supplements. So you can see here in this one, this was a, an exercise study where they looked at healthy participants that were physically active uh, to perform, a, this was a randomized single blind crossover study. Everybody, this was a seven day study where they were giving a thousand milligrams, so I'm talking about dosing here, a thousand milligrams per day for seven days, or a placebo. And what did they find? They found that seven day quercetin supplementation significantly attenuated post exercise glucose induced insulin response. So it helped in that way, increased total antioxidant capacity. Um, so it increased, there's an enzyme, a very powerful enzyme system in the body called SOD, superoxide dismutase. So it improved upon that. It actually affected this byproduct of DNA damage called malondialdehyde uh, during the recovery period. And, while sub and it increased the VO2 max. So this was, this was again a study done, a small scale study only on 12 people, but showed improvement in insulin response, improvement in antioxidant capacity, and a reduction of chemicals that are made that can cause damage while simultaneously improving VO2 max. So benefits to exercise induced inflammation. Now we've got human studies on quercetin supplementation and blood pressure. And this is actually a meta-analysis of multiple studies. They looked at 10 different trials, 841 participants in these different 10 different trials. And so what did they find? 
Quercetin supplementation decreases blood pressure in normotensive and prehypertensive patients. So it had blood pressure lowering effects overall. Now, you know, if you've watched any of my crash courses, I've talked about numerous other nutrients, including magnesium and CoQ10 and arginine and vitamin B1, all affecting blood pressure, you know, lowering blood pressure anywhere from three to five points, and this is systolically or diastolically. Um, you know, so when you, you have an additive effect, when you start combining these things, if, you, if, you know, if you're jumping to blood pressure medication, keeping in mind that, that blood pressure medication comes at a cost, most of them deplete nutrients, especially CoQ10, many of them deplete magnesium, many of them deplete B vitamins. And so when you, when you take a medicine to lower your pressure that causes efficiency of nutrients that also help to regulate your pressure, add that to quercetin. There's been, there's been a lot of debate in, in the literature and also online about people you know, going carnivore versus plant-based diets. And again, one of, the, one of the things you're not gonna get from a carnivore diet is quercetin. Um, this is why I'm, I'm a bigger and stronger believer, not in just full carnivore or full plant-based. I think, I think we have a variety of foods because there's a variety of, of benefits to both sides. But at any rate, quercetin can lower blood pressure. Um, definitely been studied. We look at some of the other trials that have done, been done in humans you look at this um, diagram here, this is a summary of, of several. But you can see here on the, on the left, T, T2DM stands for type 2 diabetes mellitus. So this is basically sugar diabetes. Um, and they studied in this one, 72 women, 35 to 55. They gave them quercetin or placebo. The dose in this study was 500 milligrams of quercetin one time a day for 10 weeks. And what they find? It lowered systolic blood pressure. It... Um, it also lowered interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. These are inflammatory chemicals. It improved total antioxidant capacity, and it lowered oxidized LDL, which is the type of LDL that's been damaged, uh, and it lowered fasting glucose. So it had an impact and, and multiple effects in diabetics. We see another study here on type 2 diabetics, 24 patients, quercetin at 400 milligrams once a day, lowered postprandial hyperglycemia, or so basically, it lowered blood pressure very quickly after a meal. We see here in this study on hyperlipidemia, 400 patients, quercetin for two months, lowered triglycerides, increased HDL, and lowered LDL. So um, there's very few things that can do all three. Uh, fish oil is one of the things that can do that. Vitamin B3 can do that. Uh, but again, quercetin... Uh, showing up in that trial doing to have those effects. And then we come down here, there's not a trial in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 71 patients, 45 were healthy. They gave uh, basically 40 milligrams, which is not a very high dose, 40 milligrams of quercetin three times a day. And this was done over a course of about two weeks. And look at the impact it had on parameters around the liver. It lowered... AST, ALT, and GGT, all liver enzymes indicating potential for liver damage. It also lowered triglycerides and it lowered an inflammatory molecule called TNF-alpha. So again, these are all human studies on the impact of quercetin. So if you're resonating with any of these, um, any of these problems, you, know, you can always ask your doctor about, about taking it, or you, could, you don't necessarily even have to ask your doctor because there's no real danger in taking quercetin, as I'll show you shortly.